And I'm here today with Robert Elaine, who's a dog trainer with over 25 years' experience of dog training. We're going to have a chat today about um, all aspects of dog training, uh, how you can train your dog, how to find a good dog trainer, and um, how to create a good relationship with you and your dog, and, and hopefully avoid pitfalls and problems. So Robert, um, how did you get into dog training? Oh, well, um, like most people, I got a dog. Um, when I was very young, my mother got rid of our problem dog. Absolutely broke my heart, never recovered from it. So when I was able to get a dog when I was a little older, I was determined that she wouldn't get rid of this one. Went to classes just like the average pet owner. But then I really got bitten by the kind of dog training bug and worked my way up to competition with my dogs, competed, then started running my own classes, got really into that. Um, then started studying behaviour and it's just kind of kept evolving as I wanted to learn more and more. I see more problems in my clinic, mm -hmm. more and more problems recently in my clinic and I think it's getting worse with dogs with very bad manners, uh, very little training and also aggression problems as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that that sort of thing is getting worse? It is getting much, much worse. Just sort of 10 or 15 years ago, the most common problem I saw was separation related behaviours. And now by a country mile, it's dog to dog aggression. And after that, it's dog to human aggression. And often dogs towards their own owners. Yeah. Which is so what, why do you think that is? Is there one thing or is it a, a, I think a, there's a lot of factors? Yeah, I think there's a few things that are all coming, kind of coming together. In the last sort of 20 years, there's been a real move away from ever saying no. You're not allowed to punish people, dogs, anything. You're supposed to ignore all the wrong behaviour and only reward the right behaviour. But what we forget is that our dogs are naturally warring animals. They're animals who do say, I don't like this and I want you to stop it. And I think the less you say that, the more you kind of say to the dog that it's okay. But this is not an animal that appreciates. So you can't say, if I'm really nice to you, you're supposed to be nice back. Mm. What the dog will often do is think, well, you're just very weak, aren't you? So I'll just do whatever I like. If I run away, will you just wait until I come back and then give me a biscuit? So what's the incentive to not run away? So when people get a puppy, they're desperate to do the right thing. And certainly it's at that stage of the dog's life when good training and bad training will have a huge effect on the puppy and how it's going to develop and behave and grow. So what is the best thing that we can do for our puppies to get them on the right track in life from the very beginning? I think the most important thing with puppies is to stop thinking of things like puppy socialisation, puppy training classes, puppy parties. What we need is socialisation classes, training classes. It wasn't broke, it didn't need fixing. The ordinary traditional dog training class had adult dogs, puppies, males, females, young, old, all having to learn how to interact in the same environment. And I think we need to much more get back to that. If you just put puppies with other puppies, it only teaches them how to behave with puppies. So puppy parties where there are only other puppies, the dog only learns how it should behave around other puppies. And then it takes that behavior to adult dogs who often won't appreciate it. Um, I think it often sets the owner up to believe that this is the right way to train. So then they go out looking for other puppies and again, not preparing their dog for adult dogs. And I think they often just run so badly, they almost set the dog up to fail. So you don't think they're a good idea. So what should we be doing with our puppies? When you start training a puppy, you're setting that puppy up for the rest of its life. Um, people often see training puppies as easy. Well, because they're only puppies, it doesn't matter so much. Um, so you get new trainers, always want to start on the puppies. Well, if you get that wrong, this may affect the puppy for years to come. So it's very, very important if you're going to train puppies that you train them right from the start. And I think you can't dabble with training puppies. You can't have a go at training puppies. You better know what you're doing because otherwise you're going to create these people problems that may not manifest themselves for months or even years, but you caused it. Um, I certainly, and I think most people would say that they're seeing a lot more people setting themselves up as dog behaviourists, dog trainers, I think it's very much a growth industry, but it's also a very unregulated industry and people can get qualifications from a weekend course or even nothing at all, just thinking, well, I'm good with dogs, I can teach people. So how do we go about finding a well-qualified, well-trusted trainer for our dog who's going to do them good and not do them any harm? One of the things that I find most difficult, and I have the greatest sympathy for the average pet owner now, is that everyone is a dog trainer. Everybody's an expert, everybody's got a certificate or a qualification that says that I am you know, a behaviourist or a dog trainer. Um, but what concerns me is I know lots of people who were substandard dog trainers who now feel, well I can call myself a behaviourist. I was only recently, a couple of weeks ago, talking to somebody I knew that was a dog trainer that I wouldn't frankly that anywhere near a dog who now calls themselves 
uh, not only a behaviorist, but one of the country's leading behaviorists, without ever actually having studied behavior. But to me, one of the most notable cases was, you know, we have a very uh, famous, glamorous dog trainer who we've all seen on TV, who recently was successfully sued by the channel that employed her for fraud. And the reason she was sued was because when she started doing that show, she'd never been a dog trainer at all. She'd never done dog training, and this was proven in the case. But what she'd done was implied to the channel that she was a dog trainer, and they then allowed her to run this series. And in that first series, we saw uh, her advise an owner to put a dog to sleep because it wasn't trainable. And they did this on the show. Good. And this from a person who'd never trained a dog in their lives, um, who'd never actually owned a dog by her own admission, really? had never owned a dog. But she feels she's sufficiently expert to tell these people to go and kill their dog. Mm. This is terrifying. With dog training classes, there are some really, really important things that you need to know before you join. Ring them up first of all, and find out if they're happy for you to come along unannounced and watch. Some of them will say, no, you need to come on this day, stay for this time, come up and speak to us first. Those presumably have things that they don't necessarily want you to see. So you want the dog training class that's going to be happy for you to just walk in. Never join a class unless you've watched it first. Um, it's often very difficult to get your money back, and by the time you realise they're doing things you don't like, your puppy may have already learned from it. So go along and watch as many classes as you can before you join. If you th see things that you don't like, walk away. Look for the dog who's having the most problems in the class. What we often do is we look at the good dogs and we think, oh, they're doing really well, aren't we? What you want to see is what happens if you have problems. So look for the worst dog in the class and see how they're dealing with that. And what you often find, they just kind of push that person aside. And you think, oh, well, they're not worth wasting energy on. But they've paid for that class and they're entitled to be taught. So that would happen to you if you don't do it. Also, any dog training class that has vocally aggressive dogs, walk away. Don't join. What happens is your dog observes these dogs barking and growling, gets fed up of being barked at and growled at, and he starts barking and growling too. There are a couple of reputable organisations that if you go to those, that increases the likelihood that you're going to get somebody who's good at what they do. Um, I'm on the board of an organisation called the UK Registry of Canine Behaviourists. All of our members have to have a set standard of education and academia, but also they have to be practically involved in uh, educating owners and dogs. Um, we have a strict code of conduct, a code of ethics, and people who don't comply will be out. There's another organisation called the Association of Pet Behaviour Counsellors, or the APBC. They, again, have a very strict code of practice, code of ethics, code of conduct. Um, all of their members have to be at degree level education. Unfortunately, they don't necessarily have to be practically training animals, um, but they, it requires that they have a level of education. Um, so you always want to go to one of those organisations and say, can you recommend a member in my area? But as I say, anybody, absolutely anybody, can become a dog trainer. You could do it tomorrow if you wanted. Just go and print yourself up some flyers, stick them in your local vet's pet shop or news agents. There's nothing that says you can't. 